everybody, welcome back to the results reveal video for the blind test that I did last week that was comparing Helix stock cabs to third party impulse responses. And one other little twist I threw into this blind test, which was no stock cab or IR, but just using an EQ match plug-in to create the sound of an impulse response. So this whole video is a little background came as kind of the last in a series of videos I did talking about the difference between Helix stock cabs and impulse responses. Before we get to the results, I just wanted to answer one question that I did receive quite a bit. I had a lot of people ask me various forms of the same question saying, why are you so defensive about Helix stock caps? Why are you so passionate about people not using impulse responses? Now, first of all, I am in no way passionate about people not using impulse responses. I made that very clear uh, in the previous videos and I think people sometimes just take away what they want to hear or what they think that I think and kind of put that upon me. But I was very clear in stating that I think that anybody who wants to use third party impulse responses should do just that. There, I have nothing against them. I have said many times, there are some really amazing third party impulse responses available and some wonderful companies doing that. And I'm so happy to see folks support those. But the question arises, they say, well, why are you so defensive of the Helix stock cabs? And it's really not that. Let me really answer that in the simplest way I can and why I even talk about such a thing. I get a lot of questions sent to me, whether in YouTube comments, emails, uh, direct messages through whatever social media platform, people asking advice about tones and how they can get their Helix to sound a certain way, get it to sound better, get the sound that they want out of it. So often they tell me that before they even contacted me, that so many people told them, well, just go buy some third party impulse responses and throw those in there and everything will be fine. And then they go, well, I did that and it didn't work. I'm still not happy or after I help them and they say, yeah, I got things sounding really good, but then somebody came along and told me I should use third party impulse responses and I did that. Now I'm all messed up again. I don't know what to do. So I get this on a daily basis and I find it a little frustrating when folks are spreading the idea that it's impossible to get good results from the Helix by using the stock cabs. That's simply not true. If somebody prefers a third party impulse response, that's what they should use. If it's something that works for their workflow and gets them to where they want to go faster, that's fine too. As long as they can also say, well, you'll also get great results from the Helix very easily. And there's also this misconception that we need to EQ them and do all these other crazy things to them to get them to sound good. And that's just not true as I'll show today. So I just wanted to clear that up. That's why I put these videos out with this information, simply because I deal with it on literally a daily basis where I go, oh, here we go. Another person that kind of got led down this path because somebody just threw out the blanket statement. And this is really all I'm referring to is the blanket statement of all Helix stock cabs suck. You can't get a good sound out of the Helix without third party IRs. And this is the big one. Just go throw a third party IR on your sound and everything will be fine. Well, I got a newsflash for you. Not all third party IRs are great. Not all third party IRs are built equally. At the end of it, they all simply act as a different EQ curve for a different sound. Not necessarily better, not necessarily worse, maybe just the perfect thing for that particular situation and taste. So I have nothing against IRs and I have nothing against or for stock cabs. It's just trying to stop the misinformation that somehow they're absolute necessity to make your Helix sound okay. I hope that clears it up because I've had so much misinformation about what I have said spread in different internet forums and amongst people discussing it. And I, it's, it's funny, I, I say things in a video and then I go, I, somebody says, oh, he said this. And I go, I, I never said that. I don't even know where they got that from. Anyways, so let's set up what this blind test was about. I had nine sound files. Two of them were Helix stock cabs. One of them was the Isotope Ozone Match EQ used to recreate a third party impulse response, which will remain nameless. And the other six sounds were IRs from some very reputable third party impulse response makers. Uh, two from each actually, okay? And I never told anybody what they were listening to. I didn't want to give any hints as to the brand or anything else. I just said, hey, let's deal with this idea that so many folks say, Helix stock cabs suck, they're terrible. You need a third party IR to sound good. Well, here we go. Here's a whole bunch of third party IRs couple Helix stock cabs and one that's neither. And let's see if people can pick out what is what with any degree of accuracy beyond just sort of wild guesses. And I got some pretty interesting statistics 
behind this. So let's go take a look at the results. So here we have tone one through nine. Here are the results. For tone one, five people thought that was a Helix stock cab. One person thought that that was the EQ match version. Tone two, four people thought was the Helix stock cab. Two people thought it was the EQ match. For tone three, five people thought that it was the Helix stock cab. One person thought it was the EQ match. Tone four, six people thought it was the Helix stock cab. Three people thought it was the EQ match. Tone five, three people thought it was the Helix stock cab. One person thought it was the EQ match. Tone six, six people thought it was a Helix stock cab. Two people thought it was an EQ match. Tone seven, one person thought it was a Helix stock cab and one person thought that it was the EQ match. Tone eight, two people thought it was the Helix stock cab. Two people thought it was the EQ match. And tone nine, five people thought it was a Helix stock cab and three people thought it was the EQ match. So what was actually what? Well, let's take a look. Tone one was in fact no IR with just the EQ match. Tone two was a York Audio IR from their Friedman cabinet pack. Number three was in fact a Helix stock cab and it was a 412 Uber cab. Tone four was an Own Hammer 112 Fender Deluxe Reverb IR. Tone five was a York Audio 412 from the same Friedman pack, but their V30. Tone six was also a Helix stock cab with the 412 Greenback. Tone seven was a Celestian Greenback 412. Tone eight was an Own Hammer 412 Greenback. And number nine was also a Celestian Greenback from the same pack, but a different IR. So these were very interesting results. Six people did in fact guess that Tone 6 was a Helix stock cab, but six people also said Tone 4 was a stock cab. Five people thought Tone 1 was. Five people thought Tone 9 was. Four thought Tone 2 was. Not so many in Tone 7 and Tone 8. So that's really interesting. And when I look at these results, it basically confirms what I kind of thought would happen. There's a bunch of people kind of just taking stabs in the dark at what they thought was what. Nobody in any of their guesses correctly picked out a stock cab and gave any particular reason why they thought it was. So it wasn't like they said, oh, I hear a particular this that I always hear in the stock cabs. Some other interesting statistics here. Six people said that they had absolutely no idea what they were listening to. And to be honest with you, if I personally had to do this test, I would have probably fallen into that category as well. I don't really think I would have wanted to do this test. It is not an easy one when you don't know what you're actually listening to. Which just goes to prove the bigger point that this idea that stock cabs just simply suck, I don't really believe to be true. They're just different tones compared to a third party IR. Here's another interesting statistic. The number of folks that guessed correctly on the stock cabs that also said they were just taking a wild guess were two. So of the 11 votes that were correct, a couple of them were, were admittedly just wild stabs in the dark. Only one person guessed both stock cabs. So all of the other guesses for the stock cabs, the person got one correct and one incorrect. So only one guessed both. Number of people that guessed both stock cabs and EQ got every answer correct were zero. Now this is where it gets very interesting. What were the favorites? Tone number one got seven votes as being the favorite. Tone number two got three votes as being the favorite. Tone number three got seven votes as being the favorite. Tone number four got one vote as being the favorite. Tone number five got four votes as being the favorite. Tone number six got four votes as being the favorite. Tone number seven got three votes as favorite. Tone number eight got two votes as favorite. And tone number nine got two votes as favorite. Three people said they thought all of the sounds were great. Tone number four seemed to be the consensus tone that was the worst sound. And there's a reason for that. If you remember me saying that tone number four was this Fender Deluxe Reverb, IR. I don't think it's necessarily a bad IR. I just think it was used in the incorrect situation. I was using this with a high gain amp 
That IR was probably not designed for that tone. Now, maybe it would work in some cases, but I think the consensus was that not only did a lot of people think that was the Helix because they thought it was the worst sounding one, quote unquote, worst, right? Whatever that means. So they automatically assumed that was the Helix when it was in fact an IR. So we see the danger in saying to somebody like, well, just go throw a third party IR on there because maybe we're going to send them to something that is not an appropriate one, especially somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience with these things. So as far as the favorites go, the Helix cab actually was one of the top ranked ones. The 412 Uber, which was tone number three, got the highest votes tied with the one with no IR, which was a match EQ to a third party IR. And the other Helix stock cab did well in finishing second. So again, very interesting results. So what does this all tell us? Well, I mean, I don't think it necessarily proves anything, but I think it does go to show to a large degree that this fallacy that all Helix stock cabs suck, they're no good, we can't sound good with the Helix, kind of goes out the window now. Here we are where a, quite a number of people listened to all of these and really didn't have any idea what they were listening to. There was a lot of guesses. When we have guesses, we're going to have some correct and some not correct. Uh, some folks, I don't know, they never really went into detail about why they thought one was a stock cab. A lot of the folks that did go into more detail uh, were actually incorrect on their guesses. And I'm not saying anything negative about anybody who incorrect, correctly guessed. I would not have been able to pass this test. I don't think for a second I would have. I would not have even wanted to do it. And it's interesting. I think a lot of people watched the video that didn't guess, and I think probably for good reason. It was not an easy test. But I wanted to make it that way to dispel this myth that somehow we put a third party IR in and magic happens and everything sounds great. In this case, the vast majority of people really couldn't even tell the difference. And a lot preferred the stock cab. So let's do this. Let's go over to Cubase and I'll show you what I actually did. So here I have the sounds listed in order, tone one through nine. And I also have down here the IR tone that I used to match with the match EQ for the tone number one. So let me just play through the riff again and I will solo through, we'll start in order, it'll loop, watch as I solo each track out and you'll hear it, okay? So here, let's take a listen. Now let's compare, by looping this, the IR match version to the original IR that it was trying to copy. And again, I think it created an almost indistinguishable tone between the two of them.
Again, pretty incredible what we can accomplish with that match EQ. Now, one thing that I saw a lot of people talking about is that I somehow think that working with Ozone's match EQ is somehow a replacement for impulse responses. I never said anything of the sort. In fact, I said how ridiculous a way it would be to work. It was simply to show the point that in the way that the Helix uses IRs at the maximum of approximately 42 milliseconds of length, they're essentially acting as nothing more than just a linear static EQ curve. Nothing more, nothing less. That was the only point. I would never use these in any real world, real life situation. It'd be absolutely absurd to even suggest such a thing. But again, so many folks don't listen to what I actually say and want to try to paint me as saying something that I did not say. Very bizarre stuff, but it is the way it is, I guess, these days on the internet. So, one thing, like I said, if we listen to number four, which was the Own Hammer 112 Fender Deluxe, I think it's a great IR, just not for this situation. <laughs> That is, unless we were looking for that particular type of sound. So how did I go about getting these tones? Well, what I did is I had a copy of the Does Benzene Mega Amplifier with these settings in Helix Native, and I added an IR block where I then added the IRs that I already revealed in the results. For the Helix stock cabs, though, I did this. Now, you might wonder why I have cabs on two separate lines. All I did is I wanted to retain the settings I used for both, so I dragged one down to here, but they never went through both. So all I did is one time the same settings on the Daz Benzene Mega, I had a dual cab block on the 412 Uber V30 with a 421 dynamic, one inch back, low cut at 80 hertz, high cut at 12 kilohertz. I had another of the exact same cab with a 4038 ribbon, one inch back, and I just blended those equally, and that's the tone you heard. This took me all of about 15 to 30 seconds to dial in, if you want to say that. I didn't even really dial anything in. I took the default settings of eight kilohertz on the high cut and I actually raised those to 12 kilohertz uh, just because I find the eight kilohertz sometimes is a little low, but it works for some people, whatever. I probably could have just left it the same and the results wouldn't have been any different. You might be wondering why I have this gain block here. Well, all it is is a mono gain block to sum together the stereo dual cabs so they were centered. That's the only reason I put that there. The other cab was the 412 greenback. And again, I had the dual one with a 4038 ribbon, also with the same low and high cut settings at one inch, and I pulled the level back to 4 dB on that to balance it with the 421 dynamic, one inch back. Uh, I don't know why that got set to minus 0.8 dB, no big deal, but it's part of the blend, I guess. Maybe I touched that by accident with my most wheel, uh, low cut at 80 hertz, high cut at 12 kilohertz. So that's it. There was no other processing whatsoever done at all on the Helix stock cabs, nor was there any done on the IRs. And another very important point was that I volume matched these perfectly, as perfect as I could possibly get them so that there was no discrepancy in loudness to skew us. You know, I could have been disingenuous about it and taken the Helix stock caps and bumped them up a couple dB. And people go, oh, I like those ones better. That was not done. I checked with the statistics on the RMS values. I checked with the loudness meters as well. And these were matched on the RMS uh, values to identical figures and were all within 0.1 dB on the LUFS meter. So I don't know how else I could have got them closer. So as I mentioned before, I get a lot of questions. Why are you so passionate about the stock caps? And I'm not really, other than the fact that I do think simple statements such as, just go throw a third party IR in there. Well, let's take a, a beginner who's not really familiar with modeling, not really familiar with the Helix or any other modeler. And they're given this advice and they don't really know what they're doing which we were all there at one point. What if they took something like tone number four here, where they just went and grabbed the Own Hammer 112 Fender Deluxe Reverb, a wonderful IR when used in the proper place, with the maybe edge of breakup, Fender style tone that we're looking for, but they threw it on a high gain, so they go, this sounds terrible. And the reason I say this is because this is exactly the situation that I have dealt with over and over and over again. That really led that person down the wrong path. Now, giving them a very specific IR to try out based off of a series of criteria that they may be presented. I'm looking for a, a great heavy tone with whatever descriptive terms they use. You go, oh wait, I like that too and I have an IR that works for that. I have no problem with that and that makes a lot of sense to help folks out. 
Where I've always come from is let's get people working within the Helix before jumping down that rabbit hole of third-party IRs, spending extra money just to have to sift through many, many IRs, drag them in, test them out, possibly getting ear fatigue in the process, when they could get to know the tools that they have at hand, which are those Helix stock cabs, which are every bit as good quality, I guess we could call them, as any of the third-party IRs. They're just different and it's going to be a matter of personal taste. But if I can help folks to sort of explore what's in there, and honestly, if they go through them all, give them a good try and go, no, I just really don't like them, and then they find some IRs that are great, then I would say, that, that's awesome. You're now down the right path to getting the sound you want in the shortest amount of time and get back to what this is really all about, which is we're gonna use this stuff to make music and be creative with it. And to inspire us to play better and inspire us to come up with great musical ideas. And if it takes a third party IR to do that, then I say then that's what you should do. But again, all I'm trying to do very simply is dispel the myth that somehow the Helix number one needs a third party IR for it to sound good and that to dispel the myth that number two, all Helix stock cabs suck, which they do not. And we also do not need a bunch of EQ. We do not need a bunch of processing to get them to work. As I think this little blind test and experiment showed. At least I hope it did. But again, I'm literally not looking to argue with anybody. If you want to use third party IRs, that's exactly what you should do. If you truly believe they sound better, then that's wonderful. That is also what you should do. I'm not gonna tell you anything else, but just please hold back from automatically telling people this blanket statement that you absolutely need to go to third party IRs or else the Helix cannot sound good. I think that that's kind of been disproven to a certain degree here. And I honestly think it would be more helpful to people just starting out and beginners to avoid throwing that out there when I don't think it really is necessarily true. That's my opinion on it, and I'm done talking about it now. It's a very potentially divisive topic. Uh, there was a lot of, uh, shall I say, upset people with the videos that I did on it, and I never meant it to be that. I meant it to open up discussion and to hopefully get people thinking different than just you know little one-liners they read on the internet that could potentially send them in the wrong direction and cost them more money and even also just really slow down them getting to their ultimate goal of the tone that they're looking for, if that makes sense. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Those are my thoughts on it. On to other things now. I want everybody to grab their favorite IR or stock cab and go out there and make some great music with it now because that's really what it's all about. And I'm gonna do that too. I'm working on a really cool track right now. I recorded the rhythm section with my good friends, Marco Miniman and my great friend, Jason Henry. Absolute amazing basis. He played a beautiful fretless bass part on this track. I'm almost to the point where I'm mixing and yes, I actually used all stock cabs on it <laughs> and it's turning out really good. So I'm just about ready to mix that, but stay tuned for more news about that track coming soon. I'm going to have some videos about that. So thanks so much for tuning in guys. Please like the video, share it with anybody who you think would get you sort of watching it. Please subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I'll be back really soon with some more. Thanks again so much for tuning in. Ciao for now.